Okay, so this is the day four um, from race class, gender, and gay rights class. Looking at reading four. Um, just going to summarize some of the main points. So the reading begins looking at Margaret Fuller. And Margaret Fuller is definitely somebody who is arguing for a change with regard to the, you know, uh, expectations that women must follow. The cult of domesticity, uh, pure, submissive, domestic, and devoted. Here you could see from one of her writings that she's talking about the nature to grow. Uh, she is looking at the difference between man and woman, and she is declaring war on the idea that the woman's place was in the home. So this is definitely somebody challenging the four virtues that we have been discussing in class. According to line 15, I like this line where it talks about women uh, leaping into professions for which they have no role models, no invitations, and very little encouragement. So it brings up the question about uh, whether or not a group of people, in this case women, are going to be able to advance within the society if they have no representation in institutions of power within that society. So I just did a Google search here for Elizabeth Blackwell being the first woman um, you know, to receive a medical degree. Keep in mind prior to uh, you know, allowing women to be, become doctors, uh, the furthest somebody could go within that field would be a midwife, which simply means they are assisting with birth. Four virtues, mentioned this before, pure submissive, domestic devoted. Pure is a reference to purity. Um, submissive, you have to always be willing to give in. Domestic is a reference to you know, household chores, things of that particular nature, taking care of the child children, the family, and devoted means you are devoted to your family. Your family comes first, you come second. Take uh, into consideration this particular path of the, the little girl. You know, she can, you know, embark on this path, path of vice and become an outcast, or she can be an honored, loving grandmother if she is obedient and submissive and so on. Okay, so uh, the reading also addresses the point here about women in careers running into two problems. This could also be said for today, present day, um, where, you know, if a woman is uh, working, let's take the nuclear family, man, woman. Um, you know, if we're looking at the 40s and 50s, you have one, you know, the, the mother's usually uh, you know, depicted as the person taking care of the home. But what happens as the 70s and 80s and present day where more women are working. And so here's talking about women, you know, dealing with the dilemma of their career as well as their desire for a family and how can they possibly do both. And as we get uh, into yet later years, yeah, you start to see, you know, that same expectation of being pure, submissive, domestic, devoted, being tacked on to the uh, work that the female is doing. The reading introduce you to the uh, Lana Sawyer case. Lana Sawyer, she's somebody who meets a man of the upper class, Lawyer Smith, and she is a seamstress, a member of the working class. They go on two dates, and on the third date, uh, Bedlow winds up uh, having his way with her, as the reading indicates, and as a result of that, this becomes a rape case. And the issue here is that the woman, in this case, should be uh, you know, understanding that this guy is a member of the upper class and uh, he probably has no interest in her whatsoever. Notice here how they're also questioning you know, that this is the uh, third outing um, and on a third outing that establishes some sort of relationship. I also made a connection in class to the uh, Kavanaugh case and whether or not uh, the person uh, accusing Kavanaugh of some sort of harassment, um, you know, this was a woman who was a professor, and uh, that seems to be, you know, against what's going on here, where, you know, is there a difference with the woman if she is a member of the working class in comparison to somebody who has some sort of power or education within the society? Things just seem to change. So uh, in the reading, you know, looking at that particular case, um, they talk about uh, why she was out on the street on the first night when she meets this individual, that she was only going through the motions like those middle class girls who refuse their suitor's first proposal. You know, keep in mind that these four virtues kind of put women in a dilemma. You know, they are expected to be pure, 
That's the expectation. So when we're looking at this case here, she's only going through the motions. And what that means is they're questioning whether or not she is uh, saying no because society wants her to, you know, uh, or is she just going through the motions? You know, she kind of has to say no. Otherwise, that's a hit against her purity. And so as she continues to say no, the male knows that this is just a formality and, you know, that possibly might be the reason why he forces himself on her. As they say here, uh, will appear to be averse to what she inwardly desires. You know, she is, you know, uh, Lana Sawyer in this case, she wants to be put in this situation. You know, why else would she be on the first, second and the third date with this individual? You know, but because of purity, she has to go through the motions. And this, of course, sends a mixed signal to the perpetrator here who just, you know, does what he does in this particular case. They also mention here about, uh, you know, it took only the jury only 15 minutes to agree on an acquittal. Um, and then you start to see men of the lower class, you know, upset about the fact that men of the upper class and think about what they're saying there. Somebody of the upper class could pretty much do what he wants because they're going to also start looking at the woman's class. Um, women alone in the present and present uh, brings up this uh, 2012 uh, case in India where uh, the woman, again, is, is out at night. And as a result of her being at, late at night on the bus, you know, you know, things happen to her. And as a result, uh, you know, she becomes somebody that is, you know, in some way, you know, participating in what happens to her, uh, just simply as a result of her being out late at night. You know, she should know better. I guess that is the argument there. Notice in the verdict here, a decent girl won't roam around at nine o'clock at night. So we're still talking about this particular case here. And uh, this is something that was said. So when this uh, case was, uh, you know, more in the news, you know, these were things that people were saying. They were questioning, you know, why this person would be out at night and so on. And Daniel Sickles case, uh, this is an interesting one as well, because in this particular case, uh, this man, Sickles, kills this man right here. Why? Because this man is found to be in an intimate relationship with his wife. And as a result, on trial, says, my wife is a prostitute. I was also angry about her adulterous ways. Uh, he pretty much uh, argues that this individual is uh, you know, not guilty. He claims that he was insane when he finds his wife in this act. And so him killing him is okay because in that moment he was temporarily insane. Um, they also looked at her relationship prior and they tried to bring up uh, her adulterous ways. They were really just looking at the woman and trying to say that the woman also was somebody who was uh, a little sexually promiscuous. And the end result, uh, the guy is insane because his wife was cheating and she was somebody who had a pretty bad track record. Uh, line 57, um, you know, it's about education. And keep in mind here, they're looking at the parent, that the parent is concerned about the girl getting an education, but really not to improve herself, uh, but really to attract, you know, a particular spouse in marriage. Line 67, this is another example when society needs them. You know, we need school teachers, so women are going to fill that particular void. That's what that reading line addressed. Then the reading started to talk about the Lowell girls, which is a reference to Lowell, Massachusetts, where women were uh, you know, recruited throughout the country to work in the Lowell mills, which is what's going on here. This woman is making some sort of fabric, but I like the uh, bell schedule. You know, this is looking at kind of the structured life that these women were going to have in this uh, Lowell factory. Women in slavery, uh, abolitionists. When you see this term, keep in mind this is uh, the group of people trying to end slavery. And Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott, these are two women that are also fighting for the abolitionist cause. You cannot look at the abolitionists without looking um, at women and vice versa. And so, uh, Eventually, these two women are trying to uh, 
you know, say something about women at a slave anti-slave convention, they are rejected. They are not allowed to issue their speech, which leads to the creation of the Woman Manifesto, which is distributed at Seneca Falls in 1848. And pretty much what they do is they uh, take the Declaration of Independence and they rewrite it to talk about women and all of the female struggles. And before you know it, you see two groups, the NWSA and the AWSA, both advocating for change with regard to women's status. So make sure you jot down Will Manifesto, Seneca Falls, and of course, these women were denied an opportunity to speak at an anti-slave convention, which I guess prompted them to say, you know what, we are going to just try to, uh, you know, change the uh, direction of women within society. That's it.